I want to welcome you all back to the Haight-Ashbury Oral Video History Project. And I'd like to introduce Richard Honigman again and uh, have him introduce everyone else that we're, we're discussing today. Well, to my right is Alan Cohen's widow, Ann Cohen. To my left is Martine Algier. And to my furthest left is Azul. Welcome. Uh, Azul uh, lived with Alan on and off several times when both were between various girlfriends and somehow ended up together. <laughs> You're a brother, you in other words. You're a brother, in other words. Yeah. My name is Rebecca Nichols, and I will be moderating this along with you. Uh, Richard, I see you have an oracle in your hand. Is that an original? This is an original oracle and one of the most popular and famous of the oracles. Well, uh, the cover is beautiful, as is the back cover. The oracle was known for its artwork, it was known for its writing about spirituality. It was known for its writing about politics. And it was known for its writing about the scene, what was going on. Just the advertisements of, uh, of, uh, of the various shops and the business that were starting up. So a lot of the advertising came from the street. From came the, from the street. From Everything the street. came from the street. This is of and by the street. Where was the Oracle printed? Uh, it was printed on 16th Street and Folsom. What's the name of the press? Quinn. Oh, you're Quinn Press. Quinn. Yeah, Quinn Press. And he was basically a supermarket publisher that publishes those four and six page uh, supermarket sale Wednesday on Okay, Cantaloupe. gotcha. <laughs> and uh, that was his stock and trade. And um, somehow, uh, I mean, these are all very straight union characters. Somehow, they agreed to print the Oracle. And we couldn't touch the machinery, and we couldn't affect the actual printing process, but he let us tell the men to do things that they never would do, such as take a bucket of ink and throw it across the, the press and let the ink just go where it goes. <laughs> right. And uh, we created so many new effects that eventually he got, Mr. Quinn got his payoff. He got a feature article in Printer and Editor's Quarterly. Wow. Explaining all of the new ideas that were coming out of these. Who, who was giving these ideas in the group of people? Just all artists hanging out together and, and what happens when artists hang out together. Exactly. They invent stuff. That's great. And so it was invented on the spot. Some That's people great. knew more about printing than others. Some were total novices and just walked in on the scene and, and uh, started didn't Stephen Leaper spend a lot of time over there at the press oh, and yes. also Hetty McGee? Hetty McGee and Steve Leaper are the two most responsible mm -hmm. uh, for an awful lot of the article. Um, mm -hmm. They did know, the layout work? Or? They did the layout work. Uh, Hetty was more of an artist. Steve Leaper and, uh, and uh, Gene Grimm did most of the layout. Who, who, who picked the artist? Who, was it a group collaboration? Who picked yes. who did the articles? Or? Everything was always talked about, argued over hassled over and eventually agreed upon and figured out. And people right. would just walk in off the street yeah. and they'd have wonderful things on acetate and sometimes they'd be black magicians and they'd have everything written backwards and you had to hold it up to a mirror. <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if you, but the main thing about the Oracle that <clears throat> really made take off is up until that time, you know, it had been the New York Times and the Herald Tribune and the Messenger and the this and that. It was all very hard edge with no good news. There was no good news. Sure. The Oracle was the first one to come along with good news, with joy, with celebration, and with love. By the way, Richard happened to mention girlfriends. Uh, the pill had been developed, and everybody could really uh, make love and not war. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Oracle was, was, was a reflection of the sense that, de that developed in our own consciousness about ourselves. Sure. Over the years, the Haight-Ashbury in 1964 was a very different place than the Haight-Ashbury three years later in 1967. Yes. In 64, it was just developing. It was just sort of an adjunct of the East Village. And month by month, it grew exponentially. Sure. It got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually, and so many uh, interviews were taking place from the Chronicle and from the TV, and eventually, Herb Cain got his slimy hands on it, and the Chronicle. Herb Cain invented the word beatnik by putting beat with sputnik together, and he invented the word hippie, because everyone in trying to explain what was going on there, 
what the Dian was about, what Hate Street was about, what the dances were about. We're saying, well, man, are you hip to this? Are you hip to that? You gotta be hip to, to what happens when you do this and when, and the word hip was used so much, Kane's funny mind turned it into these people are hippies because they always use the word hip and right. they're trying to be hip, right. which is a far cry from William Burroughs' yes. original hipster of the village and, and, and Los Angeles sure. and San Francisco in the 40s and yeah. 50s. Sure. And Thais Octave, hip meant aware, mm. that you got it, that you groped it, that right. you understood it on a different level, on another perceptual level. Are you hip? You understood yeah. the essence of it, that you were hip. You saw into something. So it was a positive word, being yes. hip. You know, talking about the journalism of the time and people writing about us, we, we haven't touched on, on the press conferences that we had. Right. I would love to hear Those were very... Uh, interesting and, and I think who, and who was thing. invited to these press conferences we, and we, where did they take place we invited the whole press first of all I had worked with Jerry Mander uh, as his assistant doing press conferences so one day it dawned on me we, were, we didn't lo like what was being written in the press we, we were being misrepresented so I said why don't we do our own press conference and we put out what we think will will touch people more sure, deeply sure, give sure. them more of a deeper understanding of sure, what we're sure. really all about so because I had these skills, it was pretty basic stuff to know how to do that. And so then other people got on board. And what we did, the first one, I think, was at the firehouse. And the idea was to create the ambiance that would speak of what w the values were, are, that we felt were important aspects so, of the new culture. Being so misinterpreted. Right. right. Which so we, we still are. I yeah. Mean, right. So, so we wanted now. to create right. the ambiance that would speak of those values. We tried to create an atmosphere that was very warm and loving and welcoming and and we did the press conferences turn out the way you like you Yes, hoped? they did. We got great press out of them, yeah. as I recall. Yeah. We we and did. That's how I got to the Oracle because I knew Walter Bowart from the East Village other from my East Village days. He called me up one day in San Francisco, he was the only person he knows in San Francisco, and he says, Hey, there's this press conference out in some place in Marin <laughs> County called Stinson Beach. You know where that is? Yeah. It, it's being held in this guy's uh, house, this lawyer's house. Uh, I think he works with Marvin, with Melvin Belli. Uh, can you pick me up and, and, and take me out there? And uh, I think you might like some of these people. And that, that was the underground press conference. That was the that underground press conference. That was the first press underground press conference. And I walked into that room with Walter, who, as I say, I had helped him start Evo and... 64 or 5, and um, I met most of the people that were to be my best friends for the rest of my life. Wow. Mm. That was the day 70 people came for lunch when I was out in the kitchen. Okay. They could was that when you met Alan? Yep. That's when I met Alan. Little That's right. And this took place where? It's in Beach, Beach. The home of, of Bill Tula. <coughs> but we had mainstream press conferences before that. That were where we had invited all the mainstream press. Right. See, we had television cameras and representatives from all the main newspapers and magazines. But it was things. very hard to straighten out the sensationalism that drives the press. Right. Yeah. No oh, yeah. And there was fear being generated by the press. What we wanted to do was reverse that, and and create the image of a group of people who were really wanting to create a positive change in the world and. And to take away that, that fear of that. Sure. And eventually the Summer of Love was created and announced and made to happen by us because we knew we were going to be stampeded by them, mm. the press so and you put the, out the and notices before. society at large. So instead of them creating a horrible situation, we tried to make the best of the situation. We saw the train wreck coming. We sure. saw what was going to happen. So in order to steer it in the right direction and get the most out of it, get the most uh, positive news value, tell the most people about ecology, about saving the earth, about, about the right foods and, and, and what we thought was the right way to live, peace and love in the, mi in the middle of a war, uh, we announced the Summer of Love. Who, who arranged the uh, permits, The who got the talent? The what do you mean for, the, for the gathering yes. for the human being? Yes. Good question. Were you involved with that, or basically to advertise yeah, it? Yeah, Somebody had a cold yeah. heart for them, you know. Oh, yeah. Who did that? I who, know were the, you, who were the players? I know it's Bert, our little meditation room was the site of meetings. Do you know some of the bands it. that played? Do you? Um, well, well, the the Human Beings, <laughs> sure. Grateful sure. Dead, Quicksilver yeah. Messenger Service, yeah. and uh, yeah. Big Brother and Holmes. And Alan Ginsberg was there. They played all the time together. Yes. Yeah. 
And I'm just wondering who made all the arrangements. We will but find you know, out. It the happened thing that very I was going fast. It was a, sure. It was, it was the idea was birthed, and it was within weeks. Within yeah. two two weeks or so, and it just it was amazing. Huh? And, and up yeah. to this point, many of us had seen each other because we all lived in different neighborhoods, and or lived in Moran, lived in Berkeley, had seen each other at the dances at the at the first sure. acid test at Longshoreman's Hall, sure. which was my first published article back in Evo. Right. Um, in New York, I wrote from. I was there, San sure. Francisco correspondent, and um, and then at the Fillmore, and, and of course, uh, uh, no one here yet has mentioned uh, Chet Helms and the Family Dog and the Avalon Ballroom because sure. the Avalon Ballroom because mm -hmm. Chet Helms represented a whole different force than did Bill Graham. Sure, Bill Graham was really the uh, the uh, Florence Ziegfeld sure. of his time. Sure, sure, and uh, and uh, Chet Helms was really from the streets. Was one of exactly. us. Uh, uh, he was the, uh, the Graham was an outsider in many ways. He was hip. He had the New York. He was hip, but savvy. he was an immigrant, you know, Jew, running from the Holocaust with that New York edge. Yeah. And he walked across <laughs> Europe to escape. Yeah. Oh, totally. He walked across Spain and got on a boat and came to New York. Right. Bill Graham was the manager of that Peter Berg thing. What was the name of that place? The, uh, the, 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 the Famous. Famous. The, the, the uh, Mind Troop. Mind Troop. Which, uh, mind well, he, he saved the Mind Troop. That's how it all started. Yeah. He, he Bill saved Graham the Mind Troop, basically. Bill Graham came down, and there was, the, the, the Mind Troop got busted in the park. They said, let's have a benefit. Everybody said, what's that? Oh, you get these bands together, and everybody pays money and give it to them. So they went down, and they rented Fireman's Hall, right. way down on 3rd Street. Right. And That's I got it. down there That's with Yaya, it. and the place was absolutely packed, and there were lines coming out onto the street. That's right. To try to get in, and it was the bugs were there. That's right. <laughs> And, Jefferson uh, Airplane. Um, uh, Jefferson Airplanes. Jefferson Airplanes. Bugs and Jefferson Airplanes. Yeah. Bank. You imagine that sure. for like a dollar seventy-five. Right. So, and so what finally came was the, the fire department came. They tried to close it down, but they couldn't close it down. There were too many people involved and too many people. But they did stop people from coming in. But he saw that, and when he saw that, he said, "My God, I could do this at the Fillmore or the Avalon mm -hmm. or what was the name of the one on." The Carousel Ballroom. Carousel Ballroom. Carousel Ballroom. Carousel Ballroom. Later became so Fillmore he went down West. and he just That's right. took this funky old Fillmore that nobody had used. I think he got it for $25 a night or something. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And he signed a lease for like a year. And, what, and that started the big dances. And what the no first show was the airplane, yes. Yeah. What no one understood about both the Avalon on Van Ness and the Fillmore is that the acoustics were perfect and they were perfect for the kind of dancing we were doing because they were huge. Uh, uh, brick walls three feet thick and huge beams holding up wooden floors sure. and plaster walls and the best acoustics are like Italian opera houses right, they're made out of walls. masonry and wood and plaster like so when we danced the on the beat yes. at the Glenn McKay's light show sure. or at the Bill Ham's light yeah, show sure. and the beat came down and the, and, the, and, the, and the oil and water hit on the projector That's on right. the, and we all came down at once that place was like a drum Right. It was a drum full of hundreds of people all on the beat. Exactly. And it was amazing. Exactly. And, uh, and did you ever report about any of that stuff in the Oracle yeah. uh, on concerts that had happened? Did you give reports? Did we, no, or did we you advertise really, the no, upcoming no. shows or anything? It was anything too commonplace. Like right. It was, it was an everyday event. But all of these things are spontaneous, historical, uh, it's a staircase. That's right. And that's how... The, the consciousness came about of that we were these people doing this thing sure. in this special time and place. I want to come back to the be in for just a moment because it relates to what you're saying. Is my recollection is that there was an awareness that there was an awakening happening yes. out there in the hinterlands. Sure. That, that there were kids out there that were freaks that didn't know that they that there were others, right? and that they knew they were strange and different, and maybe our vision, or what I sensed, and some other people, that maybe they were kind of scared and alone, and that part of the human being was to, part of the human being was to run a flag up the pole <coughs> so high that said, hey, there are others of us here, you're not alone. And we have and we power We do that because we knew unity. how to work with the media. So okay. creating an event that was really huge, that would hit the media, with the sense of the presence of this new emergent consciousness right. and that people would... So the idea for the human being came through the oracle. Um, or oracle people. The oracle more, people. More than just the oracle. And then obviously it takes a lot of people to put on an event, to bring the stage and to do all the production work and stuff. But the idea came 
And you had a cover of one of the oracles, yes, which was the artwork of Michael Bowen and Stanley Mouse. Yes. And Casey, too. Yeah, Casey said <coughs> it's yeah. on this photograph. Yes, Who's? it was Casey Senebans, a photograph. Oh, okay. That's of the Indian man. Yeah, it was a good Wonderful. One. Right. And yeah. um, so it almost having that as a cover came out about how soon before the event? That barely, publicized barely the event. weeks. Oh, so that, pu that yeah. was the whole thing. Oh, yeah. was, it was only about two Boom. weeks. Yeah. So wow. that was the publicity. The Oracle went out on the street. Well, there were posters. Posters. And, posters and word of mouth. And then we had the, the flags, the marijuana leaf flags. Yeah. Remember that? They were on silk. There was silk screen, beautiful marijuana leaves on silk. And they were on long poles. I remember because I was given one and I was going down Haight Street that morning holding this flag and people gathering behind me, Following not really knowing flag. where the heck I was going. <laughs> and I gathered this whole troop and there were other people all around with these flags that, that pulled in people, like you know, Pied you know, Pipers. Sure. You know. And you know how young people are, especially then in the, in the 60s. Uh, Word spread very yeah, quickly amongst teenagers happening. and amongst 20s. Especially yeah. if you're There's a scene going down. Man, this is going to be great. <laughs> things happen Let's every go. day. What's happening yeah. today? Because you know? it really was on the moment. Yes. yes. We yeah. really were living on the moment then. So, um, it's so amazing to, uh, to uh, see some of the memories of, of what's happened. And uh, what I see in all of you is that spirit's still there. You still... We're all living the same lives. Yeah. We're just older. Well, and, and hopefully more grounded with more wisdom behind the vision. Well, um, well, I'd seem to be, yes. More integrated. Yeah. We're more integrated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was the thing about the 60s. I mean, there was a lot of criticism about the 60s. that It wasn't integrated. It was off the wall. The people were spaced out and far out and crazy and da 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 But, you know, uh, we know probably from experience that people take LSD before they really develop any sort of ego or self, you know, they often can fall apart and disintegrate because they're already so spacious. Right. <laughs> yeah, LSD, Oshawa used to say, you're speaking of macrobiotic, he said, LSD is the most yin thing in existence. The most yin, because it takes you way out there, transcending space, Buddhas in the sky, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. Totally. And the one thing about the, us coming together now is right after Alan passed away, I really got it very clear that a lot of people felt that their hopes of rekindling the oracle, their work getting in it, was going down in the grave with Alan. And so I started contacting the oracle staff so that wouldn't happen again. And we now have been, we've been collaborating. We started around September, I believe. And we're actually emailing instead of being in the staff so office. Now it's 2005, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're doing it. We can email. We're doing it. We are. It's it's great fun. We brought. So we're all busy. We're all making a living. We're all running around. We're all doing. We all have. <laughs> are you all other professions? In, are there other people involved that are not here? Yes. 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 Who else? Yes. Oh, yeah. Who else? As many involved? of the Oracle staff. We, well, let's see. We have um, Travis Rivers, Steve Leeper, Jean Grimm. Jay J yeah, Jay Fallon, Amy McGill down in La uh, down in uh, Carmel. She's uh, we've been talking. Oh, Hetty McGee in uh, in London. Uh, Stanley Mouse's daughter is in Japan, and she's which part daughter? Of Oceana. No. Uh, Rose. Rose. Okay. Rose. Yes. And what's happening with her? And uh, well, let's see. She. She's, well, she's actually, in regards to what's happening with her over there, I'm not quite sure. I guess I've been selfish in writing her about what mm -hmm. we're up to. But she is, uh, she is a writer. Wonderful. And she's an extremely intelligent woman. Mm -hmm. And then Dangerfield Ashton, back in uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Japan I, is picking up a lot of the 60s stuff. They love totally. it over there. They have Go, Gil, Go over, and all my friends. They always say they're going over the conference. They have 2,000 people. Everyone stays up for two or three days. And, Dance and go away because they have such a constricted society. You sure. know, it's so much based on formality here, and because of the size of it, everybody's really bound to each other. That when they b break loose, you know, they really break loose. And uh, tons of Japanese go to Goa and follow Washington and Osho sure. and all that. The Japanese uh, like everything psychedelic. <laughs> well, how do you guys feel about finding each other again? I mean, when this project started, obviously, 
some of you still knew each other, and uh, well, we knew each other yeah. through friends. Yeah. You know? and we you all had loose contacts. Uh, yeah. We all have friends that know friends, and sure. eventually, all of a sudden, yeah. we're at a party, and oh, hey, I haven't seen you in five years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. We last saw each other at a funeral. Well, how do you feel about each of you? Do you share in this vision of the future of the Oracle? And I'd love to hear from each of you what you see as the future of the Oracle. What would you? What would your vision be? Where would you see it going from here? In, in the spirit of what it was? Well, it could never be what it was because we're not living in that kind of a situation. Sure. I mean, we're all in our 50s, 60s, and 70s, and hate speed isn't what it was. The world isn't what it was. It's in a whole new form of complexity now. And um, we see a lot of the product of what we've done in a very positive light. Uh, certainly ecology and solar energy and... Um, hybrid electric cars and so on. Everything, everything we envision recycling uh, is, is yes. now recycling is now sure. uh, recycling was something that people laughed at once, and now it's as common as can be. It's in every city, everywhere. So, uh, an awful lot of good came out of it. Uh, some of it got screwed up. Some of us got screwed up. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the Hayden Ashbury was successful because there were intelligent, hardworking people at the heart of it, and we're still here. And uh, the Oracle will continue because there's a need for uh, vision. There's Do you see new issues being created? Do you see yes. uh, oh, yes. uh, remaking some of the old? Tell me, tell me more about well, what you think. First of all, think. the first Oracle that we uh, do, it, um, it's going to be printed at the old web press, at Howard Quinn's re uh, printing wow. press. It's still, still there. there. And the press is still there. They said it's dusty. But it, they've maintained it, and we will be able to print it there, which is exciting. Very exciting. Of course, so, the printing cost is going up enormous in yes. these days, you know, after the oil crisis. So has apartment rent. That changed things quite a bit. They just couldn't splash it on. It cost a fortune. Yeah. So, we may have to have a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the film will yeah. work. Yeah. Right. Even the it's, it's, the paper. it's so necessary, just like you said at the beginning when we started this interview, that there wasn't any newspaper or anything out there that was positive. Well, I feel that way now regarding political, that we really, we're, it's necessary. People need to stop being negative and you did this and this isn't working, well, but embrace. Well, also, newspapers are dying. They're dropping like flies sure. because people don't believe what's in them anymore. They read it online. They That's right. Or they're you indifferent know. to it. Or they're indifferent cold. to it, sure. Yeah. They're cold. Sure. And they've been caught in so many lies and subterfuges themselves. I mean, they're, they're just as bad as the government that they're reporting on. <laughs> Did you end up with membership online and people could subscribe all over the world to the Oracle? Yeah. Or and also the Oracle future... had a universal thing. Let me just show one thing in here. Sure, I'd love to see. Uh, I, I think that the universal thing continues. And I was just giving reference to the second page, which is a, a picture of Krishna inside of a cell playing music. And these are all the different bardos or the different stations of life. And this is a cell, and the music is going out into the cell, and Krishna is inside the cell. And this is all to back up Steve Williams' poetry. That's but your art it's Azul's yes. piece. It's Azul's art, yeah. Azul's you, art. Are <laughs> <laughs> you are Azul. <laughs> My art piece, yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a floating mandala, which is inside of us. So basically it's saying that inside, equivalent to outside, Krishna is not only outside but inside. As above, so below, you are it, playing, you know, the cellular symphony of your, in your body, sure. and uh, that it's uh, all one. So sure. those kinds of visions, I think, are going to continue. The I, basic think hermetic thing. I think it's even more needed now than before because uh -huh. of the climate of fear. So much. We need to hear some good news. And to, to really come forth beyond that, idea of fear and totally. something that totally. Richard, I think uh, you mentioned that you wrote an article in uh, yeah, this publication. Yeah, from the streets. And it told and it a was, little bit of the way it was here on Hate Street in the 60s. It was uh, supposed to be an insider's view an insider's instead view. of the New York Times and the Washington Post and the San Francisco Chronicle writing about us from the outside from some guy in a suit or some woman in a dress. Sure. How about I'd love to hear a little so, portion of it. I'll read the first paragraph. And we are in what year at the moment? In 1967, Sounds... right at the height of the summer. Day. Okay. Walking barefoot with hair askew, handmade robes over torn blue jeans, 
and young people wander from noon until early two, wandering aimlessly up Haight Street over to the free store at Carl and Cole and back to the Sonic for a cream pie and Coke or to the panhandle for digger stew. Hundreds of young people, refugees from suburban internment camps, are making the scene for duplications in kind in several dozen cities around the country. Most streets like Haight Street in San Francisco were once local shopping districts, now turned into an abstract vortex for an indefinable pilgrimage, an admixture of homemade spiritual group therapy and actors in life theater, which turns the participants into celebrants. Yes. Oh, that was great, Richard. <laughs> Wonderful. Perfect. <program. laughs> it goes on and on from That's there. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's a time capsule. Yeah. I mean, if we were walking down, you parked your cars to come do this interview, if you mm. walk down H Street today, that spirit is still here. The spirit of celebration is still, still here. And the spirit of community. One more thing I want to say is that many people worked often on one painting or wow. on one page. Right. And the surrealists used to do that also. Sure. Pass it on to the next person, pass it on to the next person. Sure. It's open creativity because there was a lessening of the ego and attachment of this is mine and da 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 da. da. We're sharing sure. the vision. And in fact, that's what we our we're first doing article. Oracle, yeah. That's what we're doing on the first article. And the new oracle. Tell new me oracle. more about it. What? Sure what indeed. would it be? Well, what can we look forward to? What are some of the the ideas? Well, or it's visions? a group article, uh, and and it's about it's about Big Brother and how the world has changed. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. There's microphones everywhere. The government has all sorts of plans to keep track of all sorts of people doing all sorts of things. This was never the way it was. Uh, in 1967, the city of Redondo Beach had a plan to put TV cameras on every street and intersection, and it was laughed out of existence by the entire country wow. as being absurdly Orwellian. Mm -hmm. And now that's becoming what's happening, both by the government and by capitalism. Look at all the picture phones on people's phones. Mm -hmm. sure. Look how much stuff is being caught by amateur photographers, mm -hmm. the police beating up on, on black and brown people. I mean, there's a good side to it, and there's also a very strange sure. side in that the world of 1984 is being created automatically out of, out of fear and out of greed. And those are not good reasons for 1984 to take place. Right. But yet, on the other hand, um, some of the, like Azul, some of the people that were writing about this, we're getting both sides. We're getting the tough end. We're getting the, the soft end, the spiritual end in the article. Right. And it's... Wonderful, and there's a little bit of spatting going back and forth in this emailing. And do you have artists interested in contributing? We well, yes, we do, yeah. but right now, I guess we were looking for the context, but we're, it's we're, getting time. We're also moving toward a unified <coughs> energy field, we're moving toward a, a, a quantum thing, like the, what the beep sure. kind of approach to reality as being a fifth dimensional of uh, the uh, net of jewels. Mm -hmm. the reality is really a net of jewels. And we only foul it up with our, uh, you know. If, one if, stomping if somebody places. watching this video would love to support what you're doing, would like to donate to you, would like to find out how they can help make what they have available, how could they? How they? How could they contact you? Okay, I think probably they could contact us through me, at Annie's Little Farm. Just A N N I E S little L A T T L E farm F A R M at sbcglobal.net, and I will make sure that I get it out to our group. That's Can wonderful. I show a would love to of see the Oracle it. office. Sure, please. As we're closing, I would love to see this. Yeah, he'll get it. Gene Grimm was kind of overlooking this because he did a lot of the layouts there. That's how you usually saw Gene. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Do you have anything else with you? We have about one minute left. Oh, let's see. Here's another of Jean Grimm and Alan Cohen. And do we know who the other one is right up no. there? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll find out as these videos get viewed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think you have another one with us? With you uh, as well? This would be Alan, and we think this is Ralph Ackerman. Yeah, the photographer. Yes. Yeah. Old friend. Alan kept in touch with all these people. Yeah. Alan was very good at keeping the thread that, together. Is that photo um, uh, on, on, on H Street? 
Yes, it's right there on your. And Alan yes. was responsible for the facsimile edition, wasn't he? Yes. yes, that was a major piece. And of people a get book. Uh, this book still is it yes. available through uh, Regent Press in Oakland on Avalon. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have the address, but Regent easily Press. found on in Oakland on Avalon. Beautiful. Regent Press. Dollars each, right? Beautiful. A few hundred. A few hundred. Well, well, I feel like Alan is with us, um, and is really proud so that his family is supporting all of your hard work and what he believed in and the spreading of people's thoughts to poetry, writing, um, the support of art, artists and writers um, to tell the good news and uh, hopefully to, to inspire news. the young. That's right. So that's their turn. Yeah, the good news is what we need. Inspire love, not hate. Because love, being good, putting out this energy just brings more love. That's right. So you don't have to run away. You can join in no, and right. make a circle. Yes, <laughs> right. yes would be the word. <laughs> oh, and thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, and thank you for doing it. Thank oh, you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.